In this video, we will be installing PyServer 2015. This includes the AF server and the data archive. This is the machine on which I will be installing the software. Its machine name is PySRV. In the previous videos, we planned out the installation, made sure we had all the necessary prerequisites, and downloaded all the install kits from the tech support website. We have also already installed SQL Server 2012 Express, which is a prerequisite for the AF server. Since we have all these pieces in place, we are now ready to install the Pi server, starting with the AF server. To see how we should go about this, let's consult the OSIsoft Lib library. To do that, please open a web browser and navigate to livelibrary.osisoft.com. Once there, we can follow the links to get to the documentation on installing AF. In our case, we decided to install all AF server components on a single computer. If this is different than your case, please consult the sections below. Here we have a checklist of things that we need to make sure are in place before we begin our installation. We have uh, our prerequisites, which we checked in an earlier video. We downloaded the kit, but we also need to make sure that we have the right privilege on the SQL server to install the Pi AF SQL database. If you remember, I added my user to the local administrator group on this machine, which should give me permissions to install software. And it also gave me the option to be a SQL administrator. So we can see here, I'm in the administrators group. And during our SQL Server installation, we added this group to have sysadmin privilege on the SQL Server as described in our manual here. So all these pieces are in place. We can begin by going to the directory where we downloaded our install kit and running the install kit. So let's get there. So I can right-click the PyAF server install kit and run it as an administrator. Once I do that, it's going to ask for a location to extract the install files. You can keep the defaults, but I prefer to extract it to a known location in case I need to come back later. OK, so it looks like we're ready to begin the installation. This list here shows us what will be installed. So we're looking at some redistributables and our PyAF server. So let's click OK to begin the installation. All right, so now it looks like the first package is complete and now we're gonna be installing the PyAF server. So let's click Next. It's first going to ask us for a destination folder where the software should be installed. In our previous video, we showed how many drives we needed and what each drive would be used for. We've designated the C drive to hold our operating system, and this G drive here is going to be holding all our Pi server applications. So I'll need to make that change here in the path, and I'm just going to delete the C and add a G and say OK. So now our AF service is going to be on the G drive. So then we can hit Next. As I mentioned before, the AF server has two components, the application service as well as the SQL database, which is these two components. For our machine, we're going to be installing both. If your situation is different, this is the screen where you would make that change and select which components you wish to install. So for us, we can hit Next. Now we're asked to provide an account under which the AF application service will run. and then I can click Next. So now on this screen, we need to specify which SQL server the install kit will put the AF database on. If you remember from our SQL install, we left the default name of SQL Express. So this is the correct Microsoft SQL instance. 
So we can select Next. Once that is done, we get a review screen with all the options that we've chosen so far. If you can check this over and if it looks right, go ahead and click Install. Okay, so it looks like our installation is completed successfully. So I can go ahead and close out of this window. If we need further verification that our AF install has been completed successfully, we can check two places. First, we can use SQL Server Management Studio to verify the existence of the PyAF SQL database. So once we connect to our SQL Express instance, we should be able to check the databases for the existence of that PyAF database. The name of that database is PyFD. So we can see here PyFD exists, our SQL database has been installed correctly. If we want to check the application service, we can look at the services console and again check for the existence of a PI AF service right here. So with those two checks, our AF installation is complete and we can move on to installing the PI data archive. So let's review the installation guide for installing the PI data archive. I'm going to use the same checklist we used in our planning video and ensure that we're ready. We just completed step number eight, which was installing the, the SQL server as well as the AF server. So let's continue from there. For step nine, it says we can install the optional AF client. That's part of the 2015 install pack, so we'll go ahead and skip that step for now. Step 10 says we need to ensure that we have proper permissions, that we're an administrator or a member of the local Windows Administrators group. Uh, we showed that earlier in this video, so we're good to go there. Next, we need to think about synchronizing time on all our Pi system computers, so let's follow this link for more information. As the Pi Data Archive stores time series data, it's extremely important that all time settings are correct on all machines in the Pi system, and especially those that are involved with data collection. So be sure to check all these machines, check that their time settings are correct, and that they're automatically configured to change for daylight savings time. So it looks like mine is set correctly, so I can set OK and head back to my list. So after the synchronizing time, we need to check for the Windows TZ environment variable. So we can click here for more instructions. On the left, you'll see the different operating systems. I'm using 2012R2. So I'll follow these instructions to check on this variable. Click environment variables. And then we'll use the system variables down here, and we'll look to make sure there's no TZ variable. Looks like we're good, so we can check that off our list. So the next step is to download software. We've already done that. Then we're asked to create a machine signature file, or MSF, and we use that to generate a license. As part of the install for the Pi Data Archive, an MSF will be automatically generated for us, and then we can use that to activate a license. So you can follow this link for more information. So that will actually happen as we install. So at this point, we are ready to install the Pi Data Archive. So let's navigate to our install kit and run it. We'll right click it, run as administrator. Specify a file path for our extraction. So again, we get a list of all the software to be installed. Most importantly there, we see that we're installing the Pi Data Archive. So we can click OK. All right, now here's where the install kit has generated that MSF for us and put it in our documents folder. 
So we need to now generate a license. That's done at the tech support website. So I'll go ahead and open up a new tab and navigate to techsupport.osisoft.com. You'll need to sign in. And then under the things to do menu, you can generate a license file. From here, you should see a list of your sites and Pi servers. I'll be generating a license for the serial number ending in 22. So we actually are all the way down to step number five, where we select our MSF. So I'll go ahead and browse to where that is on mine. If you can't access the internet from the machine that the data archive is installed on, you may need to copy it to one that can in order to generate the license. So after I load the MSF, I should be ready to generate my license file. Here's our legal page we need to go through. And at the bottom, we can select I agree to get our license. All right, so my license was generated successfully. So now I can download it. And I'm going to save it in my setup kit folder. OK, so it looks like it's done. Now we see it here in our setup folder. We'll need to extract it before it can be used by the install kit. OK, so now we'll need to browse in the install kit to find that license file that we downloaded. And there it is. Select OK. We can see here that we have a point count and a serial number that should match. Then when I'm ready, I can select Next. Here it wants me to select a default AF server. Since we installed this on the same machine, this is Pi SRV. Say Next. Now we need to specify installation directories for the Pi Data Archive software. This is on our G drive where we're going to put all the Pi server. So what I'm going to do is just edit that here. And select Next. Now we need to select the data directories for our archives and event queues. By default, the install kit will select the archive drive based on the drive with the most space. So in our case, our E drive had the most space. And if we do a quick browse, we'll be able to see our E drive is our archives. And then the queues were automatically picked up because F is the second largest drive. So we can keep those, but I'm going to change the name of my folder. Down below here, we can see we have some settings for our archives that we can configure. If we hover over our question mark here, we see a recommendation on the size of our archives. It's recommended that the archives be roughly a third of the available physical memory. In my case, this setting is correct, but if you need to, you can modify these settings here. We also uh, enable automatic archive creation by default, and it's suggested that you leave this setting as this makes managing archives much simpler. So we can accept these settings, and as soon as we click Next, the Pi Data Archive installation will begin, and this may take a little while. So once the install is complete, the install kit will start all the services that make up the Pi Data Archive. So let's wait for them to start. So it looks like all services started successfully, so we can hit Next and our install is complete.
So now that that's done, we should consult the documentation to see if there's anything we need to do after the installation. And, and there are some post-installation tasks here in Live Library. So let's take a look at those. The most important is here under verifying our PyData Archive installation. We want to make sure that everything is working correctly. So we'll be going down this checklist. So the first thing that we want to check is to make sure that all the Py services are running. So to do that, we'll use Py System Management Tools. The first time you open this, you'll be prompted to make a choice about joining the Customer Experience Improvement Program. I'll go ahead and select yes, and it's recommended that you do so so that we can continue to make our products better. So once this is up, I'll go ahead and connect to our Pi SRV. And under Operation, I want to look at all the Pi services. You may be prompted to elevate credentials. Go ahead and do so. OK, so it looks like all my services are running. You may note that three of them are stopped. This is normal for the Pi system. These are not used all the time. So our services are started. Let's take a look at our next thing to check. We want to verify the activity of the event queue, make sure data is flowing. So to do that, we'll go under Operations, Snapshot, and Archive Statistics. In here, what we'll want to take note of is the value for archived events, as well as the value for events sent to queue. If these numbers are equal, this means data is flowing through our PyData Archive, and it is healthy. So in our case, this, is, this checks out, so we're good with that. Let's next uh, verify all the default points that are set up and make sure they are getting live data. So with that, we can go to data, current values, and do a quick search. And if I just hit search here, bring up all those default points, and select them all, say OK. If I click our play button here, I'll be able to see they all have a current timestamp for the data. So let's see what we need to check next. We'll also want to check our licensing. So if we go under Operations, Licensing, come up to General, want to make sure that our expiration time says never, otherwise we may have to get a new license. We also want to check our usage. We should have a current percent match of 100. The percent match is based off our machine signature file. So if changes are made to the machine, this may drop. If it drops too low, we may need to generate a new license. Lastly on the license, we want to check our Pi point count. So if we come up there on the drop down and select count, we can see here our total allowed and our amount left. So it is also best practice to create two spare archives. In the install kit, we left the default of automatic archive creation enabled, but in the rare chance that this does not work, it is good to have two extra archives where data can be stored. So I'll name them after my Pi data archive name, and I'll call it 001 and 002. Looks like those are done now. So we mentioned in some of our pre-installation tasks that time is very important for the Pi server. So there is one more bit of information about the time rules on the server that we should investigate. So I'm going to open up a command prompt and navigate to the Pi folder dir directory. then navigate to the ADM folder, and I'm going to check our time rules with the command pydiag-tz. 
So these time rules dictate the daylight savings offsets um, over the years. If we don't anticipate having any data before 2007, the two rules we see down here below should be sufficient. However, if we are going to have data before 2007, we should update these time offsets. To do that, we'll download a file from the tech support website. So if we go back to downloads, and then for our categories, we're going to select extras, hit search, and scroll down until we see the localhost TZ files for your area. I'm going to be downloading the ones for the US and Canada, and I'll just hit download, and I'll save it again to my setup file. Before we're able to use it, we will need to extract it. Now, in this folder, there are multiple time zone files for multiple different time zones. Select the one appropriate for you, and we'll need to copy it into our Pi Data Archive folder. So that's on the G drive, under Program Files, Pi and then under the DAT folder. So we will copy this file over. Before it will take effect, we'll need to change the name to localhost.tz. Once this is complete, we can come back to our command prompt, run the same command, and see that the time offsets have in fact been updated. So this is our last check on the data archive alone. Earlier we checked on the AF server, but we didn't do any creating of assets, elements, or databases, which is the only real test if it's functioning. So we'll come back and check on that now. So we'll be using the Pi System Explorer to create one database and one test element to verify functionality. You may need to elevate credentials, and it would like us to create a database. We'd like to do that anyways for our test database. So I'll go ahead and call this database test. So it looks like it created successfully, and I'll just try one element to test this as well. So I'll also name it test, and then check in. If my check in is successful, I know the AF server is functioning. All right, so that was successful. So now both the data archive and AF have been successfully tested. There is one more item that we need to take care of involving those two pieces of software. In our system management tools, there's a section called AF link this allows the data archive and AF to be in sync and can correct point counts for notifications as well as sync legacy module database to AF elements. So we'll want to set this up. So if we look here at our Pi SRV option, it says that our wizard has not run. So to get these in sync, we will run our MDB to AF synchronization wizard. So we'll go through this, press next, we'll hit analyze. Okay, so we'll need to correct a security issue. So we'll hit next. So this requires a mapping. A mapping basically translate a Windows credential to some Pi permissions. So we'll go ahead and create one. Since we're going to be mapping it to admins, let's map the local administrators group. So I'll select locations, Pi SRV, and then type in administrators. We'll create that. Now we can proceed with the wizard. So we need to choose the asset server to sync. 
we'll choose our pi SRV, and we're actually going to create a new database that will hold the synced modules. And let's call that MDB to AF sync. And select OK. Select it again, OK. And it will call the element under which the modules will be synced, pi SRV module DB. And that's OK. We can select Next. And it'll create this for us. Looks like we've successfully completed this. Um, and it asks us to start the AF link subsystem. We already did this as part of the install kit, and it successfully started. However, we did not run the wizard yet, so certain settings were not taken into effect. So we will need to restart this service in order to have this successfully sync. So let's open up our services window. Find the Pi AF link and restart it. Once that's restarted, and we refresh, it says it's a sync in progress and should complete soon. Once we get the green light, our MDB to AF sync is working properly. So we've installed the data archive and the AF server. If, however, we'll want to run asset analytics, we need to also install the Pi analysis service. So I will go ahead and run that now as an administrator. Documentation for this install also exists in live, li live library. So this install kit only installs the analysis service, so we'll click OK. And we'll install both features, the analysis service, as well as the management plugin that will allow us to configure analyses in Pi System Explorer. And our AF server is Pi SRV, so we can keep that. So it is recommended that you run the Pi analysis service as a designated service account, or if you don't have that, network service. I can use my service account here. And I'll go ahead and say yes, we'll participate in the Customer Experience Improvement Program and install. So our install is now complete, and we can start the Pi Analysis service. At this point, we've installed the Pi AF server, data archive, and analysis service. So our Pi Server 2015 installation is complete. We have also completed all the post-installation verification tasks. So now that we have our Pi Server up, it is important to configure backups. You can see step-by-step -step how to do this in our Setup Backups playlist. And we also have great videos on configuring Pi interfaces to collect and buffer data, as well as videos on how to configure Pi Server security.